Hi everybody, this unit we're going to be talking about our cardiovascular fitness, how it functions, what it does in our body, and the importance of it. As you go through this unit, think of how you can apply this into your fitness program, how you can increase your cardiovascular fitness. This is how the cardiovascular system works, okay? It includes your heart, your lungs, your arteries, the blood, and the veins. And this is kind of just the process. If you look at this picture for a second, the heart and the lungs, it carries oxygen-rich blood from the heart to the body, and that goes through your arteries. And then to the, blo the blood to the body, and then blood away from the body, the veins they return the blood with carbon dioxide and other waste to the heart. So the arteries are pulling it out and the veins are bringing it back. Here's the basic cardiorespiratory physiology. And, and the key players like we talked about are the heart, the blood vessels, lungs, and then the muscular system. Oxygen is picked up in the lungs by the alveoli or the air sacs. And then blood passes through the alveoli and the hemoglobin in the blood transport the oxygen to the heart. Now, you don't really need to know all this. It's just kind of how the body functions. I want you to see how it functions and how incredible it really is. The heart then pumps the oxygen oxygenated blood to all the organs and tissue. So it's, it's a great system that's working together and has a lot of details in it. And that's why it's so important that we give our body what it needs. So many things, the lungs, the alveoli, they all rely on each other to function appropriately. And if we're not giving them what they need, if one of the systems fail, it's going to hamper the rest of them. So it's very important that we have a strong cardiorespiratory system, strong muscles, strong lungs, and exercise benefits this. So the cardiorespiratory system, um, once again, heart, blood vessels, blood and lungs. The heart works as a pump with the right side of the heart pumping deoxygenated blood to the lungs and the left side of the heart pumping oxygen rich blood to the entire body. A great system if you want to look at that picture a little more um, on w what's happening and where it's going. If you look at the blue cardi cardiac cardiac output, the amount of blood pumped out of the heart per minute is called the cardiac output. So amount going out of the of the heart um, per minute is the cardiac output. Now the cardiac output is the product of the heart rate and stroke volume. Now the heart rate it's simply the number of times the heart beats per minute. Okay, that's your heart rate. The stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped out of the heart each beat. So each beat. Think of it as a stroke. Every stroke, which is a beat, um, that's the amount of blood pumped out of the heart for each beat. And then the cardiac output is uh, both of them. So see that equation on the bottom. The cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. I want you to know that equation. Okay, Cardiac output equals the heart rate times the stroke volume. So what does the oxygen do, right? We're talking about oxygen, it's being carried. What is it doing? At the cellular level, oxygen is used to convert the food you ate, primarily the carbohydrates and fats, through the aerobic metabolism into ATP. Now ATP, we're not gonna go real deep into it, but what that is, that is your instant energy, okay? High energy compound. It's immediate energy. It's not something that lasts for a long duration of physical activity, but is your immediate energy. Okay, During physical exertion, more ATP is needed to perform the activity. So you want to create that higher capacity to deliver called oxygen uptake, or VO2, indicates a more efficient and utilized oxygen cardiorespiratory system. Now you're saying, Mrs. Wow, this is a lot. What I want you to focus on is that the stronger your cardiorespiratory system gets, the better these things function. Okay, the more ATP you develop, the more the VO2 oxygen uptake is more efficient. That's what I want you to focus on. See how much is going on in this system and realize 
that exercise and proper health is strengthening this system that is so important uh, to your body and I want you to focus on what it's doing focus on the importance of that blood pumping and the energy that it's creating so here's just a few interesting facts about the cardiovascular and your respiratory if all the blood vessels in your body were laid out in a straight line they would stretch around the earth two and a half times that much is in your body how crazy of a system is that working together a muscular organ no larger than a clenched fist keeps blood flowing through the 60,000 mile network 24 hours a day every day of your life now don't you think you want that muscular system your heart to be strong look at what it's doing every day of your life and keeping that healthy and strong is definitely something we want to keep now we've talked about this system and I want to talk to you more about the endurance now and this is our definition here cardiorespiratory endurance is the ability to extract oxygen from the air which we breathe and supply this oxygen to working muscles in order to sustain body movement over an extended period of time now this endurance is what we are looking for as we do our aerobic exercises as you guys are working out each week this is the endurance we're looking for okay it's our it's the ability to extract oxygen from the air so once again how high is your cardiovascular system functioning we want that endurance now these are uh, some benefits that can come from a higher maximum oxygen uptake an increase in oxygen carrying capacity of the blood if it's carrying the that oxygen better through the blood your system is running better it can give you a lower resting heart rate that's great because your heart's not working as hard if it's not working as hard it's going to last longer a lower heart rate at given workloads so even when you start working hard it can still keep a lower heart rate for you because it's stronger because you're functioning better and so forth and you can see these here and go through them yourself but see how important your cardiovascular system is and creating that endurance it will give you an overall healthier body and create your body systems to function more appropriately and more efficiently aerobic activity this is where you're going to get your endurance and we're going to talk about aerobic and anaerobic in detail here in the next few slides each time a person exercises the body adapts to the stress of that activity okay so it does adapt which means you need to kind of increase your activity now some of the adaptations are acute and they're short-lived while others are chronic or long-term acute changes include an increase in your metabolism which means the energy consumption as well as an increase in your cardiac output okay the systolic blood pressure and ventilation to match the demands of the activity. Working muscles also enlarge because an increased amount of the blood is flowing to them. Look at what's happening with your body, okay? It's adapting, it's strengthening. A person wanting to possess a strong aerobic capacity must engage in some form of aerobic activity over the entire lifespan to maintain the benefits derived from the training. So aerobic is great. Um, altering it with different types of activities anaerobic that we're going to talk about is great as well but then your body doesn't adapt as much and you just need to continue to change up your activities or increase the activities that you're doing so that your body will continue to strengthen these areas now I want you to learn how to calculate your heart rate because it's very important when doing your cardiovascular cardiovascular fitness and um, what you want to do here and you can look at all these equations as we go through but all in all what we need to do is find first your resting heart rate okay now resting heart rate is when you take your two fingers and either put it on your neck or you can do it on your wrist what you're doing is you're finding your heartbeat and when you can feel your heartbeat what you want to do is time it for 15 seconds when you time it for 15 seconds you want to count how many times your heart beats okay once you get that number you times it by four the reason you're timesing it by four is to get it to a whole minute that's going to be your resting heart rate okay now the easiest way you'll see this maximum heart rate 
your maximum heart rate, the easiest way to find it is you take 220 and you subtract your age from it. That's your maximum heart rate. Now, the reason we're finding our maximum heart rate and our resting heart rate is to find our target heart rate. Our target heart rate is where we want to be when we are exercising. This is going to give us the cardiovascular endurance, it's going to give us the results we want in weight loss, and so forth. So to review, you find your resting heart rate, find your heartbeat in your neck or in your wrist, time it for 15 seconds and count it. Count how many times your heart beat and then times by four to the minute. If you want to time it for a whole minute and just count, that's also something you can do. Um, or you can time it for 30 seconds and times it by two. Whatever you want, just get that full minute of your heartbeat. That's your resting heartbeat. And then you're going to take your maximum heart rate, which is super simple, 220 minus your age. So there's your maximum heart rate minus your resting heart rate will equal your new value. And you want to be in that range. There's a low end of a target heart rate heart rate z zone and then a high end that's 60 to 80 percent you want to be in that range okay so you can times it by the 60 percent or times it by the 80 percent and then you all of a sudden have your range of where you're exercising now you say mrs well how do i know if i'm exercising in that range the best way to do it is to work an activity so go running for 15 20 minutes um, and then immediately after you're done you want to test your heart you put your hand on your your two fingers on your throat again find that heart rate or the wrist and find that heart rate for an entire minute that is the range that you're exercising in then from there you can go and realize that you need to exercise harder or you're exercising too much you'll know where you are in your range now they have heart monitors that you can get as well but that is the easy way without any sort of monitor to do it yourself Here's a few charts that you can kind of look at. They have pictures up like I was talking about finding your heart rate on your neck, uh, your wrist. There's one you can do your temple on your head or your shoulder. All these places are where you can find this one. This diagram shows it for 10 seconds and if you do it for 10 seconds that's fine. You just times it by 6 to get your full minute. Okay, So I mean this is just a range you can kind of look at here and see where in comparison where you should be when you are finding your heart rate. There's also great tools that you can find online that will just find it for you. So this is how you can do it on your own or you can do a little more research, digging, and find how to do it with the internet help. Now we've talked about that heart rate, that target heart rate zone where you want to be. Let's go back to our aerobic activities and talk a little more in depth of what those are and how you can keep that target heart rate and why to keep that target heart rate. Aerobic exercise or with oxygen, that's the best way to describe it is with oxygen. And what that means is that you need oxygen. It re it's required to produce that necessary energy. ATP to carry out the activity. So you're needing that in order to have that necessary energy for a duration of time. So aerobic, think of it, you're going to get that heart rate up to that target heart rate zone and you're going to keep it there for at least 15 minutes, okay? 15 and then more. When you're just starting out, exercise, start at 15, but then increase as you go but you need your heart rate to stay there. So if you're requiring this oxygen for your body to keep that energy going. From a, for example, you have the brisk walking, uh, jogging, swimming, cycling. These things are gonna get your heart rate up and they're gonna keep them in that zone. Okay, and that's what you want. And you're able to sustain this over time. So you wouldn't be able to sprint for a whole 15 minutes because you're not going to be able to sustain it. So aerobic exercise is something you're going to be able to sustain for this amount of time. And the primary type of exercise that stimulates improves in the cardiorespiratory system. This is the primary type of aerobic exercise to sustain or stimulate improvements in your cardiorespiratory system. So aerobic ac exercise or aerobic activities are needed to sustain and improve your cardiorespiratory system, cardiorespiratory endurance. The other type of activity is anaerobic. Now this one is opposite 
It is, does not require that oxygen to produce the necessary energy to carry out the activity. And examples of that are sprinting, weightlifting. And the reason for that is, think of a sprint, okay? You're gonna sprint a 100 yard dash. What happens to your heart? It, it increases, right? And goes into that high heart pounding target heart rate zone, but it's only there for a short period of time. So it does not produce necessary energy to carry out the activity. The heart rate then comes down. So the higher the intensity of the, of the activity, the shorter the duration. And weightlifting does the same. Your heart's gonna shoot up, but then it comes down. You're recovering really quickly. So anaerobic is without, or does not require the oxygen. And you want to implement both of these activities into your workout. A great way to do it is you do aerobic with oxygen, those long sustained energy activities three times a week and then anaerobic activities, push-ups, sprinting, weightlifting, whatever, twice a week. And both are necessary and both are very helpful in a healthy lifestyle and maintaining a weight and a health that you are looking for. So let's go to designing your own program. We want you exercising, we want you doing that. And I've kind of talked about aerobic three times a week, anaerobic twice. With any exercise that you're doing, it doesn't matter, aerobic, um, anaerobic, safety. Make sure you're being safe. Make sure you have a proper warm up. Your warm up should be 10 to 15 minutes, getting your heart going. Uh, starting a good sweat, get a good warm up in, and then you have your activity of whatever you're doing. And then make sure that you have that cool down session. Cool down is very, very important as we've discussed for getting the body back to a balance, avoiding cramping. And the cool down is gonna be the same as your warm up, a, wa a walk or a light jog, just cooling that body down. And then progression. We talked about progression, that the body can become stagnant Make sure you're progressing and increasing your workout, changing it up to different things. So reflect on this page. How are you setting up your exercise program? What benefits are you trying to get? Are you increasing your cardiorespiratory system? Now, no matter what exercise you're doing, there is a fit principle that I want you to live by and it's F-I-T-T, -T, as you can see, frequency, intensity, type, and time. We're gonna go over each of these. The frequency, and to gain the benefits of the exercise program, the frequency of your workouts needs to be at least three sessions per week, okay? That's, at, that's aerobic exercises. They need to be at least three sessions per week. You can fill in the other two days with different activities, anaerobic ones, but because aerobic, we talked about aerobic, it's not something that is gonna burn you out. So aerobic exercise does not overexert your muscle groups. You can actually do it five times a week. So if you'd rather just go for that jog and sustain that aerobic exercise five times a week, that's perfectly fine. It's not something that is gonna overexert your muscle groups. So great. Frequency, how many times a week you're doing it? How many times a week you're doing your activity? The intensity, is it has to do with your target heart rate zone. So are you where are you staying with that intensity? Are you keeping yourself in that target heart rate zone? Or are you doing more push-ups or weightlifting where your heart rate goes up and then coming down? Fit principle, know where you're at there. The type simply refers to the form, aerobic or anaerobic. What have you chosen from your list? And then there's the time. That's this, the time, um, the duration of that individual workout. You need to know each of these principles and apply it to each of your workouts, okay, and of your fitness program. How often are you doing it? How hard are you doing? What are you doing? And, and what is the time or duration of your workout? You don't want to go too high, but you want to do enough that you're getting workout. So best way to go is that three sessions of aerobic activity per week for at least 30 minutes. Get to your target heart rate and keep it there. Don't go too hard. You want to keep your intensity at moderate. Uh, the type you can alter and then the time is of the workout is important. One of the other ways to test your intensity um, of your workout is the talk test. 
and it's very simple. Okay, easy working, you can do it right then. Um, if you can talk fairly easy, you're working at appropriate intensity. If you can sing, then you probably need to pick up the pace for most of your workouts. If you can't talk, you are working too hard and should slow down within your target heart rate zone. So very easy way to assess your intensity. Um, you could talk to a friend as you jog. If you're starting to sing to them, pick up your pace. <laughs> okay, so a great way to test your intensity and where you should be because we're not going to always know our target heart rate at that time where you're in. This is a great way to, to evaluate that. Now, lifetime cardiovascular endurance training. I want to keep you successful, and it's finding things that you enjoy. Okay, so here's some tips for you to be successful with your lifetime cardiovascular endurance training. And I want you to try to implement it into your program. You're exercising week by week. Try to implement this. Set time aside for your exercise. I know if you can set that 30 minutes aside and say, nope, from 9 to 9.30, that is my PE exercise program you'll be more successful at doing it. Select activities that you enjoy. Try different ones. That list is so long. There's so many things out there that you can do in the comfort of your home or going to a gym or going with friends. So many different activities. Try them. Uh, make sure you are prepared with proper clothing and equipment. That's part of your safety as well. Make sure you're prepared so that it's an enjoyable experience. Exercising with other people is huge. It makes a lot of people successful to have somebody to go with. Um, set goals as you assess yourself. Make sure, remember, at the very beginning of this course, I talked about you are the coach. You are your motivator. Continual goals, continual assessing yourself. Music is a great way. Uh, keep records of your activities so that you know where you are, so you, so you can see your improvement. And then overall, just listen to your body. Your body will tell you if you're going too hard or if you need more. So just listen to those prompts as your body gives it. You guys try to implement this into your exercise program. This is our cardiovascular endurance or cardiovascular system. It is a very important system. You can see how much it does and why it's so important that we keep it healthy and strong and continue to keep it that way. We'll see you next time.